My lords, today we shall address gateways and L gates. We shall answer the questions, who built them, how old are they, and how do they fit into the wider context of our galaxy's history. But first, we shall begin with some speculation on my part. I believe the gateway network is relatively new in our galaxy's history, i.e. it was constructed within the past 100,000 years. Based on previous research, we know that other races have existed well into the millions of years prior to humanity joining the galactic stage. However, it's worth noting that there are no mention of other races ever using the gateway network that exists today. The Zeroni could transport themselves psionically. The Yat used incredibly advanced cryo storage to transport their lengthy bodies across the vast distances between the stars. All this information that we've gathered across literally millions of years and there is not one mention of a gateway being used. Despite my speculation, this is what we actually know. Humanity first encountered a galactic gateway in the year 2212, not long after our first faster than light foray into space. A few jumps from Alpha Centauri orbiting a binary star, at the edge of the system there was a colossal megastructure. At this point it was the largest fabricated object mankind had ever encountered. It was determined that the device was a gateway of sorts, but inactive. At the time, we had no idea how it worked, why it was there, who manufactured it, or perhaps most importantly, where it led. With continued exploration, we started to discover more of these megastructures. We found one in the black hole system, the Eye of Hawking, that was quite different. This gateway was significantly larger in mass and tethered in a manner well beyond our understanding to the singularity at the centre of the system. By this point, although we had not been able to activate any gateways, we understood that they connected to other gateways throughout the known galaxy. Our scientists theorised that it allowed whoever built them to travel the vast distances of space instantaneously. Remarkably, however, this new gateway, dubbed the L-Gate, had no such connection. It had been severed and we believe moved specifically into a black hole system in order to use the singularity for power. This was deemed important for two key reasons. Firstly, it meant that wherever the L-Gate led, it was highly likely outside of our galaxy. And secondly, whoever did this was potentially the original creator of the gateway network. After lengthy study, we determined that although the L-Gate was active, it was locked in a maintenance cycle. It would take our scientists decades to figure out the insights into its technology, how to interrupt the cycle, and eventually activate it. Much happened during these years, but one insight in particular is noteworthy. It appears that the gateways are indestructible. In the year 2247, Starbase 16 was assaulted by an unknown force of marauders. We believe they were barbaric raiders, not seeking territory, merely chaos and destruction. In any case, the raiders destroyed our starbase and then swiftly turned their guns upon the inactive gateway in the system. Even though the gateway was indeed inactive, lasers and projectiles simply bent around the device. Missiles were unable to lock on, diverting wildly as they closed distance. The gate builders had obviously built these things to last. In the year 2279, our scientists had a breakthrough. A single science vessel manned only by automatons was used to investigate wherever the L-Gate in the Eye of Hawking system led. The vessel was commanded by the robot designated EP-30, who had fantastic prior experience dealing with challenging situations. This exploration confirmed our initial suspicions. The ship had been transported outside of our known galaxy. Silence greeted them on arrival. It appeared there was nothing occupying the system other than the receiving L-Gate and the black hole powering it. More science vessels soon followed, now that it was confirmed to be safe, and a new exploration began. Nine star systems in total were discovered. It became apparent that some kind of titanic struggle had occurred a very long time ago within this cluster of systems. Some planets that may have once supported life had been shattered beyond all recognition, while others had been covered in a fine dust that appeared to be ancient and now deactivated nanomachines. For eight of the nine systems, this is what we found. That is until the last system was searched. This system held a single tomb world. On it, scans indicated a single life form was present on the southern polar region. To our away team's astonishment, the life form appeared to be a human. But yet, 
was quite content pacing around without any visible form of spacesuit or life support system. After some coercing, the team convinced the entity to head back to their vessel for a chat. The entity maintained for a short while that it was indeed human. Quite poorly, I should add. It mentioned that it was too tired to reproduce almost immediately after boarding the ship. Everyone knows the correct statement is, I have a headache. In any case, it was clearly not human, and went rambling on tangents for some time before finally admitting that it was indeed not human at all. The entity was in fact made up entirely of billions of nanites, condensed down into a humanoid form. It told us its creators called it the Nar Dishav, which translates to the Grey Tempest, or Grey for short. The tale it had to tell was quite magnificent, and I shall do my best to recount it here. The story starts with an insectoid empire known as the Desinu Consonants. According to Grey, this empire created the gateway network, including the Elgates. And if we understand Grey correctly, the Desinu Empire existed multiple millennia ago, but appear to be far younger than any of the major precursor races we've identified, i.e. the Cybrex, the Zeroni, among others. The Desinu, at the absolute peak of technological ascendancy, created nanites from a source of living metal. The nanites, which according to Grey had an infinitely complex self-designation, were instrumental in the Desinu expansion across the wider galaxy. Eventually, they began to construct the Gateway Network, allowing them to traverse much more efficiently. It's unclear how they initially reached the L Cluster, but at some point they did, eventually populating several of its star systems and importantly making it the centre of all nanite production and central command for operations in their empire. After construction of the Gateway Network had been completed, the Desinu scientists began to find anomalies within the nanite code. They found that the nanites were beginning to turn rogue, not accepting commands. Their self-replication was beginning to get out of control. The Desinu, via a coded backdoor, recalled the entirety of the nanite horde back into the L Cluster in an attempt to regain control of the situation. The command worked. Billions of nanites entered the L Cluster, but rather than falling dormant, they began gorging themselves on the planetary bodies within the star systems. The Desinu attempted to fight back, but were quickly overwhelmed. It is only thanks to the quick thinking of a Desinu scientist who managed to force the Elgate into an indefinite maintenance cycle. This kept the nanites imprisoned and prevented them from consuming the wider galaxy. It appeared that this situation left the nanites with an awful lot of time on their hands. They only had nine star systems to expand and consume and were remarkably quick and effective at doing so. According to Grey, a few millennia were spent on fruitless attempts to leave the cluster, but failing that, they began experimenting with different shapes and forms. For a time, they became space dragons, or Eldrakes, replicating the appearance of other space entities they had seen in the wider galaxy. The dragons would act as any biologic would, they nested, had children, and so forth. But eventually, this experiment became stale, and so the nanites tried again. This time, the nanites became their creators, the Desinu, even down to the individual citizens right before its collapse. However, it appears after several thousands of years of this, it also became stale, and the nanites' next experiment was, or rather is, grey, a condensed humanoid form embodying their entire civilization. We offered grey the opportunity to join humanity. In the manner that we had become accustomed to, he was a little eccentric, initially turning us down before processing that this request may relieve him of his boredom. He ended up contracted to us for a minor 5,000 years, and we've yet to explain to him that 5,000 years ago we had barely started working with bronze metals. At this point our level of technology has advanced where we can understand the gateway design and replicate it. We now understand that both regular gates and L gates function under a principle of quantum entanglement and gravitational lensing. A gateway uses the pull of a star's gravity well to communicate with the other gates through passage of gravitons in the higher dimensions beyond normal spacetime. The L gates work under the same principle, but they require significantly more power, and as such, a black hole is needed. Once an object passes through the event horizon of the gate, it is broken up into its basic energy components. The energy strands then become entangled with the energy of the destination gate and reassembled on the other side. Most importantly, we have also learned that the gateways have blockers, also nicknamed an iris, 
for lack of a better term. These allow individual gateways to prevent incoming matter from other gateways outside their sub-network, or outside the controlling empire's territory. It is a most fascinating design. Clearly the Desinu saw a world whereby their empire may become fragmented, and they would need the ability to police gateway travel as such. However most bizarrely, is that this feature is not a component that's installed on L-Gates. Perhaps the Desinu needed to remove it during construction due to the extra power draw. Sadly, we will never know, but it does mean that L-Gate systems must be turned into fortresses, for they represent a clear threat to our empire's borders. Finally, it's worth noting that no other single civilization that we can find record of has done anything beyond copying their original design, for they are all of the same standard construction template. Granted, different empires use different power generation methods, and they've been adapted to work within the deactivated gateways. But one does wonder, could we create a new style of gateway network, unconnected to the others? A question for the scientists aboard the Science Nexus to answer. And as such, from this tale, we now know that the gate builders were the Desinu Consonants. They constructed both the vast gateway network and L-Gate system that we, and indeed many other races, now use today. Thanks for watching, I hope that was informative and enjoyable. If you want to hear another story, please click the video on screen now.